Hey everyone, it's Strange Michael. I hope you're doing well today. Again, I know this video is kind of late. <laughs> Halloween was almost an entire month ago. October was almost an entire month ago. And uh, I wanted to go ahead and just because of the other day, I did the Halloween movie series ranking, my best to worst or worst to best, whatever. I wanted to do the same thing as I said in that video at the very beginning with the Halloween soundtracks of all the movies and every appearance and different uh, performance and look of the Michael Myers character. So, when I make this video here where I'm ranking the Michael Myers character versions, whatever, in each individual movie, because they all kind of are a little bit different from each other, even in the newest David Gordon Green trilogy, the same actor, Jai Jude Courtney, or Jude Jai Courtney, however you say his name, great actor, really love him a lot. Uh, even in that particular trilogy, each time that we see that version of Michael, it's a different type of Michael each time, not because of a different identity or anything like that, but because of the looks, the different events in those movies. It, it's pretty understandable when you've seen those and you're a fan of them. So a lot of this list is mainly going to be focused on the look of Michael, because I think a lot of the actors get Michael down pretty close, but some are much, much better than others, and some are really bad. <laughs> really bad. And not always because of the actor. Always, uh, most of the time I would say it's because of the directing and the... Um, the, the costume stuff or any choices made behind the scenes or anything like that. But for now, let's go ahead and start off. Number one, I do want to let you know, um, of course, my movie series ranking for the actual Halloween movies had 14 lists because I, include the, I included the uh, producer's cut. Now, we know that there's only one movie that doesn't have Michael Myers, two if you really want to debate the newest one. <laughs> By the way, there is a little bit of a, a spoiler for Halloween Ends. If you haven't seen that yet, avoid this, but... Um, for now, there's only 12 on this list, 12 movies that is, or 12 different Michaels to rank here. So we're going to go ahead and start, a, uh, start off, excuse me, at the very bottom of my list, which I think is most people's pick, because I didn't make it the bottom of my list for the movies um, <laughs> when I ranked them. My number five pick is Don Shanks and Halloween 5. Halloween 5 is an awful film, mainly because of Tina. If Tina had not been in the mix here, if Rachel had been the main character, and we had the exact same events, even down to the damn clown music, I wouldn't have had as much of a problem. But even Michael is a mess. The mask looks horrible. I don't blame Don Shanks. He seems like a very nice man. When he is playing the character, he's kind of cool. I just wish he had a better mask. If he had a better mask, I think a lot of people would forgive a lot of stupid shit in this movie. But uh, for the most part, I really like him. I think he looks... Like, the part. He looks built up. He's a big dude. If you've seen him in real life or seen him in the documentaries on this 4K set here, Don Shanks is cool. But look at this Michael, dude. Who would look at that and think that's scary? It just looks like Michael's depressed. Like, it's Christmas time. He's killed all of his family. He has no one to spend Christmas with. That's what it looks like to me. Anyway, let's move along to <laughs> the next to worst. Uh, let's see. That number 11 pick is probably a more obvious one. This is probably a lot of people's second worst as well. Yeah, this this list is going to be a little bit, uh, as I said in my previous video, a lot of the time my lists are not conventional, if you will. The community will probably disagree with a lot of my picks, but my number 11 pick I think is pretty common here. This is Halloween Resurrection. Even the 4K box couldn't make Michael scary. They had to take him and make him look like he's about to hug you or about to do a T-pose like in a video game. Uh, this Michael here had the same issue that, Resur or that H2O had right before it, even though I like H2O a lot as a movie, as the Michael Myers there, the problem that we have here is Michael, you should not be able to see his eyes. You just shouldn't be able to. And when you can, it's a problem that kind of makes him less scary. But the script here is really what makes Michael worse because of how goofy it treats it, how people like Buster Rhymes threatens Michael Myers and he doesn't just shank the guy right there. Uh, <laughs> there are things here that should not be done. I don't hate this movie like a lot of people. Like I said, this is probably my second most watched movie in the franchise just because it was the only one on cable most of the time when I was growing up on AMC, Sci-Fi Channel, all of that. I've seen this movie a billion times. But even watching it now, even watching it back in the day, I thought it was a lesser looking Michael Myers compared to most of the Michael Myers in this franchise. But anyway, that's my next pick there. All right, my number 10 pick. Oh, I almost grabbed another 4K, it's not that. Uh, my number 10 pick is Halloween Ends. As you know, I'm not a fan of this movie. It has some great positives, has some really good stuff in it. Michael is not one of them, mainly because Michael is treated so poorly by this movie. And, it, and the, the, the kind of 
media shilling for this movie. Not in a critic area. The critics actually weren't paid off this time around, so they didn't agree with everybody else. Uh, or they did agree with everybody else, all the fans and stuff who were disappointed. This was not a Michael Myers movie. Uh, it wanted to mimic Halloween 3 in the worst possible way of not having Michael at all in it. Uh, and Michael's in it for like five minutes. And it's kind of embarrassing how they use him. If you don't see him trembling on screen and you don't know if it's like a supernatural thing, is he regenerating power when he's killing people? If you're not seeing that, you're seeing Michael uh, basically teaming up with Corey and killing people. That That's just a bad idea. And just in my personal opinion, I think the look of Michael in this movie is the worst of the David Gordon Green trilogy. I think he looks like trash, man. Anyway, moving along to my next pick. By the way... Why have a Halloween film and not have Michael Myers in it? I feel like I'm repeating the exact same criticisms that Halloween 3 got back in the day, but Halloween 3 is an actually good movie. Ends has too many issues to be considered a good movie. The people who love it and adore it, I don't understand where you're coming from. I'm glad you do, but I don't get it. Uh, <laughs> anyway, my number nine pick. This one's going to be kind of controversial from the get-go. Um, Dick Warlock, Halloween 2. Um... You probably know the obvious with this movie for me. I love the setting. I love so many things about this movie. The music is really good. Some people think it's the best one of the Halloween uh, renditions of the theme song from John Carpenter. Carpenter wrote this one. There were so many things about this movie that just really brought it together and really made a lot of good moments. But one of the worst, comp or probably the biggest complaint I have about the entire film, frankly, is the look of Michael Myers. Now, I know that uh, Dick Warlock had a different shaped head from Nick Castle. They used the exact same mask from the previous movie, the original 78 movie. And that mask just, it doesn't fit Dick Warlock's head. It's misshapen looking sometimes when you have the close-ups of Michael. But the worst thing to me, in my opinion, a lot of people complain about the hair, but for me, the worst actual thing is that Michael's neck is like beige, like skin colored, and the rest of the face is white, like it used to be. That seems to me like a deliberate, like, we decided to do that kind of choice. And I think it was a terrible choice. I think it looks absolutely awful. I don't know if there was supposed to be this illusion that you didn't know where the mask connected <laughs> to the skin, or maybe they were like, kind of going for something pre-R.L. Stein, and like, the mask is part of his body. like. I don't know what they were trying to do with that, but I just think it looks like trash. Every time I see Michael in the close-ups on the screen, he looks like trash. But Dick Warlock, the way he carried himself, is such a nice man, too. It's bizarre to me to know that he could play this role as well as he did in this movie. This this ranking here is a little bit of a hang-up for me, because everything above it, I think, looks better and is performed better, in my personal opinion. It's not that Dick Warlock's performance is bad. He's really good here, and I love Dick Warlock. Like I said, he's a very sweet man from what I've seen in the documentaries behind the scenes on this movie in the 4K. But the look of Michael that has, like, the beige neck, I just don't like it. And the fact that it's not entirely mimicked on this cover, every time I see a Halloween 2 mask, I cringe because I can't stand the look of the neck on that thing. Uh, anyway, that's just my personal opinion. It's a very weird-looking uh, mask to have on somebody's head. Let's move along to my... Number eight pick on the list. This one is going to be kind of controversial to have it as high as it is because it's not traditional Michael Myers, according to most fans. I myself didn't mind it. I love the mil I love this movie quite a bit. <clears throat> I love it a lot more than most people. But I think it has so much to offer, and I think people don't give it the credit it deserves. It's a good flick. It's an art housey type of flick. But Halloween 2 from Rob Zombie, or 2009, or H2 as it was advertised when I was a kid, um, I love the look of Hobo Myers. I know a lot of people hate it. I think it looks great. Even when he has the hood up, I think it looks great. When that one shot happens, when Danielle Harris closes the mirror in the bathroom, and he comes after her, but in that background, you can see him in the shower, just chilling there. And we saw the shower curtain close just a shot before that. When we see that, that shower open, and see that massive giant, giant Tyler Maine, chilling out in there, and he just comes running at her. That is a scary scene. Even in the slow motion scene, it's genuinely creepy. Uh, Tyler Mayne's performance as Michael Myers is probably the best thing, aside from Brad Dourif's per performance in these two Rob Zombie movies. Um, probably the best things about the film are those two elements there. I think he looks great. I love it here. Not as good as part one. Even though I hate part one as a movie, Michael Myers, Tyler Mayne Michael Myers, looks amazing in that film when he's in the costume wearing the mask. In this movie, though, I really like Hobo Myers. Again, it gets so much trash all the time. 
but I love it. I think it looks great. And I'm glad that when they were going to make Halloween 3D back in the day, the script seems to identify the fact that they were going to do the same thing. Like, kind of have the Hobo Myers thing, but kind of a mix between this and H1. And even in this movie, when the mask finally gets kind of ripped on the side, and you have, like, the, the eye and the cheek and all that missing on the mask, I like that, too. I think everything aesthetically about this film is great. I think it's a better made movie than the first one. I think it's probably my favorite Rob Zombie film, aside from Devil's Rejects. Uh, this is a great flick. I really like Hobo Myers. Just so you know. I know it's controversial, but uh, get over it. <laughs> All right, my number seven pick. Let me get a taste of drink really quick. I'm going to try to speed this review up so it's not 45 minutes long like my movie series ranking for Halloween. Uh, my number seven pick is going to be one that... Uh, this one's kind of controversial. My mom really likes the look of Michael here. I think he looks kind of like a grandma a little bit, or kind of like a, a Norman Bates and mother uh, outfit looking Michael Myers, especially with the with the mask tucked into the collar. This is Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. Um, I think this is George Wilbur, I believe, if I'm, if I'm thinking correctly, because I think he did this, then Don Shanks did 5, then George Wilbur came back for part 6. I like the performance of George Wilbur, one of my favorite Michaels in the whole franchise, as you know. If you've talked to me, if you've ever heard my my conversations on Halloween, I love him. I think he's great. Uh, I like the look of Michael, typically when George P. Wilbur plays him. And then you have this movie, like I said, his first ever one playing Michael. And he just looks off. It's mainly the mask. Like, the demeanor, the look of him, he looks like he has a little bit too much padding in the suit sometimes, and that's a little bit of an issue, but the performance is really good. The mask I like more, much, much more than part like five and, you know, uh, Hobo Myers and the previous entry. <clears throat> I think it's generally good for the most part. But the mask, they went, it's almost like they tried to maintain since they had to make a new mask. It's almost like they decided, you know, we have to make this still kind of otherworldly, uh, emotionless face even more so than what the original captured. It just doesn't do it for me. It's a good mask, though, and it's a good performance, and I like the look of Michael, even though he's a little, uh, a little Batman-like. Like, there are times where you can tell he can't turn his head, so he has to, like, move his shoulders and everything to look around, especially at the one end of the movie, uh, when the truck goes towards him in that camera angle where he stands back up. He, like, turns his whole body. You know, it, it's great. I love it. Um, <laughs> but that is my number seven entry on my list. It's just, uh... They didn't do George P. Wilbur very well, in my opinion. Let me move some of these stacks around a little bit. Well, there's only two of them, but uh, yeah. All right, my number six pick is going to be the 2007 Rob Zombie remake. Tyler Mayne, like I said, amazing performer. I think he's so great, whether it be in this or as Sabretooth and X-Men. Great actor, really love him. His look as Michael Myers in this really awful movie. Now, mind you, this is the worst in my Halloween like, ranking of best to worst, or worst to best. This is the bottom of my list. I hate this film. The more I watch it, the more I despise it. I used to like it a lot, and the more I've gotten older, my, my tastes have kind of changed objectively. The third act, mainly involving Michael Myers in his outfit, his typical traditional outfit, is really the only thing I like about the film. Really. And Brad Dourif, the few moments he's in it. This movie is such a mess, but Tyler Mayne saves it in a lot of ways. Not really even saves it, but he is the only real thing worth watching it for. The look of Michael here is fantastic. I love it. The brutality of Michael, the way he's played, the way he's shot is so fantastic. We don't have the clever John Carpenter moments of Michael just leering in the background. You know, we don't have things like that, but the brutality of you can't kill this guy. He just keeps coming at you no matter what you do to him. He just doesn't stop. It's scary in that regard, in that third act. The pool scene in here, played by Tyler uh, Maine, when he's chasing after Lori and she falls in the pool and he starts climbing down the steps, that's genuinely frightening. That's a good, good moment in this franchise. And Tyler Maine is because of that. Um, or, it's because of Tyler Maine. I don't know, I can't talk today. That's my uh, number six pick. All right, let's move along to the next one. This one is uh, getting close. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. This is number five on my list. We're in the top five now. Uh, we have Halloween Kills. I love the burned look of Michael. I love Jai Jude Courtney. I think he's fantastic. Or Jude Jai Courtney. I cannot get his name right. I think it's Jude Jai Courtney. Let me try to look. 
They don't even list his name on the back of the box. How are you going to do that? Uh, blah, 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 blah. He's not even listed on the back at all. Why would you do that to poor guy? Anyway, he's really great. He plays Michael in all three of the David Gordon Green films, as you guys know. But the look of Michael here, and the brutality of Michael here, with all the gore and the bloodiness in this film, Michael is smart in the David Gordon Green trilogy, mainly in the first two films, 2018 and Kills. And I love it about that. I love that this guy can play this character the way he does, but the look of Michael here is so badass with the house fire and how the mask kind of melted right here. I love it. I think it looks great, and the performance in general is really, really creepy. Uh, not as creepy as 2018, as you can tell on my list, but I still really love it. I still really like the look of Michael as well. Um, yeah, really good pick. Really good pick. Moving along to number four on my list. This is probably a controversial one, uh, especially when you think about the fact that I haven't had Halloween 6 anywhere on my list yet. Halloween H2O. I'm going to tell you right now. People hate this movie. I have friends who despise this film. I like it better than the current timeline with David Gordon Green. I think it's way better if you have one, two, and then this movie as a, as a small trilogy, if you will. I love it. I think Jamie Lee Curtis is better in here than she's ever been in the franchise. Even though she's good in 2018 and kills, I think this is her best performance uh, in the entire franchise. That includes 1978. But Michael, Michael Myers, doing the things he does here where he, again, he kind of just stalks around and hides and whatever. There are moments like that in this film. And when he attacks, it's like it's like a cat coming out of the wild and attacking you. You know, it's, it's genuinely kind of scary sometimes. Um, there's great moments of Michael in here. One of the biggest missteps of the franchise with this movie that they had to do to make the ending kind of work is not is basically having to show you his eyes. Um, they have to have his eyes, and the mask is kind of like painted on skin tight. They did a CGI mask for a very small shot. I'm not really sure why. I don't think I ever got an answer about that, but that did happen in this movie. The skin tight mask, it is what it is. I don't really care about that. I actually like that. I think the actor who played Michael here is really good. The only thing I really have a critique about is the hair. The hair on the mask looks a little bit poofy. It's not as bad as Resurrection's hair. Definitely not, as you can tell from this list of Michael. But the performance mixed with the general mask, I really love. I think it looks good. I think that I think it's Chris Durand, I believe, who played him here. I could be wrong. I might have the wrong name here. Might not even be close to the real name. The fellow who played him here was great. I really liked his performance. I think he's a very strong Michael Meyer performance, obviously. Being in the top four for me, I think that's a great, uh, obvious thing. Because this Michael Myers is generally scary <laughs> to me. Um, I had a great time watching this film again this year, like I do pretty much every year when I get a chance since I bought these copies. Not the 4K, but the copies of H2O that I've owned over the last five years or so. Really, really like them. The hair is not perfect, like I said. All right, top three, top three on my list. Uh, this one, for my number three pick, is going to be controversial. Like I said, Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers, George P. Wilbur, um, back again after Halloween 4, Halloween 5, like I said, he didn't play it, Don Shanks did. George P. Wilbur, I love his physicality to him. They seem to have gotten away from the padding in the costume for this particular movie, or he must have built up some muscle or something, but he looks great. Um... Some people have said that George P. Wilbur looks fat in this movie as Michael Myers. I don't know if that's true. Uh, there are some shots that look a little weird, but I think it's the overalls. I don't know. I could be wrong, but that's what I think. Uh, George P. Wilbur is so freaking good in this film. Uh, I am a fan of this movie. Just the theatrical cut. I'm not a big fan of the producer's cut, but both of those can be considered the exact same movie when it comes to the Michael Myers performance, not the actual script itself and the events in the movie. In the movies, um, the movie itself is debatable. I don't think George P. Wilbur is. I think he is one of the best Michael Myers we've ever had in the franchise, mainly because of this film. I think he is so wild in this movie, just the way he chases people. I think it's so scary. There's this one shot in this movie of a hallway sequence where he's chasing after some people down a hallway. It's red lit. The way it's shot, the way Michael is kind of coming towards the camera, and then we cut behind him where we can kind of see him just right here while somebody else is over here screaming and running. It's fantastic. It works so well, and I love it. It gets me every single time I watch it. It puts a chill down my spine. As dumb as that sounds for Curse of Michael Myers, Halloween 6, or Halloween 666, if you want to call it that, whatever the film's title may be, 
I love George P. Wilbur in this film. I think he's my favorite Michael, possibly, in some regard. But he's not uh, above the other two. I just think when it comes to Michael Myers, especially on the ones like this movie that shouldn't really have as good of a Michael as they have, he's great. He's really great. And I love the look of the mask, too. I think the mask looks better than H2O. I think the hair looks better. I think all of it looks better. Even though it's right before H2O, it might even be the same mask. I don't think it is from what I heard in the documentary stuff. I think they custom made one for every actor. But the look of the mask, the look of the hair and all that looks, to me, better than H2O. I have a great time every time I watch the theatrical cut of this movie. I think it looks really cool, and I think Michael's really cool here. There's also that really great shot that I talk about all the time where there's a uh, somebody's running. They fall in their backyard. They were doing laundry, so there's some uh, sheets and stuff hanging up on some clotheslines. And uh, this person pulls one of the sheets down, and Michael is standing there with an axe. And that shot, with the fall leaves falling down and everything, he is so great looking here. It's one of the most iconic Halloween scenes or shots or anything in my entire life I've ever seen in the franchise. Anyway, that is Curse of Michael Myers, my number three pick. I need another taste of drink. We're down to the bottom two. <clears throat> All right, my number two pick is probably obvious compared to the other thing that you have to take into account with this, right? My number two pick is Halloween 2018. Uh, Jai Jude Courtney, James Jude Courtney, whatever his name is. I cannot remember his name to save my life. I'm so sorry. Um, the fact that I can remember na a name like Don Shanks from a movie that I hate but I can't remember poor the James Jude Courtney or whatever his name is here. Uh, this guy is so great. I would say that he might be the best Michael since Nick Castle. The, the look of him, the way he walks, the way he carries himself, the just the, he's brutal, he's scary, but and a lot of that has to do with the script. But the way this actor is directed, the way he plays it, and when you see him on the behind the scenes stuff, he's such a nice guy. He seems like a genuinely nice man. Uh, he reminds me a lot of Dick Warlock, in a lot of ways. This guy seems like he genuinely wanted to bring a really good performance to Michael Myers, and he does. He might be one of the best, if not the second best of the entire franchise, in my opinion. He's the second best. But to try to mimic Nick Castle so much, he does it incredibly well. It is so baffling how good he is. Uh, I love him. I think the look of Michael here with the kind of grainier, dirtier mask, but it's not burn up yet like in Halloween Kills. It just looks like an old version of the original mask. The mask looks amazing. The look of Michael, the way he stands, the, the, the kind of slenderness to him, it looks like an older Nick Castle. And I know Nick Castle did some stuff here and in Halloween Kills. I don't know about Halloween Ends. He probably didn't have to because there wasn't much in there. Um, Nick Castle... The very distinct way that he carried himself in that original movie in 78. James Jude Courtney, or Jai Jude Courtney, whatever his name is. <laughs> he, he mimics that so well, but he makes it his own. Back in the day, there was a thing on YouTube called the Joker Diaries. There was a fellow who was a Heath Ledger impersonator who did that Joker from Dark Knight. And a lot of people gave him a lot of grief because he was doing things... He was basically just making skits as the Joker. But I think over time he really came into his own. He had his own jokes, his own in-jokes and all that. I don't know if he still does it, but still, he was great. He was really great, and he earned that place, even as an impersonator, of having this definitive Joker that he really, really was great at playing online. That's kind of what this feels like for me. This feels like a great mimic of Nick Castle, but also, like, over time, especially by the time we get to the end of Kills, the James Jude Courtney had become his own Michael in the franchise. He had really hit that point. And I love what they did with Michael here in this movie. Uh, and in two parts of the, the trilogy. Until ends happened. But still, this guy's great. I love the look of him. I think the performance is fantastic. That's really all I have to say. Let's move along to my number one pick, which is obvious. The 1978 original John Carpenter movie, Halloween. This movie is great. There's so many great things about it. The music, the atmosphere, the suspense, the tension, all these things that are really there and really, really earn their spots as being great. But then you have Nick Castle, who really brought slashers to life. You can say whatever you want about, about Leatherface. You can say what you want about uh, Psycho and Norman Bates. You can say what you want about so many things, but I will tell you right now, 
I think Nick Castle popularized the total real slasher, the, the masked man, the, the stalker behind the trees out in your yard, you know, the way it's played here is so good and so iconic, even now in 2022. Nick Castle created a franchise by how he played Michael Myers, and a lot of that has to do with John Carpenter's writing and direction and all those things, but it wouldn't be what it is without Nick Castle. And I think he really made Michael the icon that he is. When you see fans like myself post pictures on anything, whether it be a, a YouTube community post or whether it be something else, it's a picture of usually the original Michael. When you see a new box set come out from like Scream Factory, it's typically the original pictures from Nick Castle. That's usually what you're seeing. I cannot imagine if this man got money off of merchandise, I cannot imagine in my brain what kind of money he would have made off of that. It might have not been a lot. It might have not even been in his contract. This is uh, a year after Star Wars came out. <laughs> You know, it's hard to imagine that. You probably didn't realize that, but yeah, this is one year after the original Star Wars movie came out in 77. Um, merchandising had kind of just become a thing. So I wonder if there were much of anything that Nick Castle made money off of from this. But I will tell you this, Nick Castle, you're an icon. I am thankful for you. So many fans out there are thankful for you. This is my most watched Halloween movie ever that I've seen so many billions of times with my mom over and over again throughout my life. It's my favorite Halloween film. I think it's most people's favorite. It's so good. It's great. It's timeless. It's a classic. It's not perfect, but it has so many great things about it, in my opinion. And especially the TV cut, which I just saw for the first time this year, which just baffled me by how good it was. All the extra little tidbits in the movie. I freaking love it. I love it so much. Anyway, with that being said, my number one pick of the best Michael Myers, and best Halloween film, obviously, is the original 78 movie. I think Nick Castle created this character, frankly, and I think the mask and everything are just perfect. Perfect. And James Jude Courtney came in, he played the role the way he did so close to Nick Castle in my number two pick in Halloween 2018. They really had some respect for Nick Castle and what his uh, performance was like. It's great. It's fantastic. I love it. I know there's more than one actor that played Nick Castle or played Nick Castle with Michael Myers. Uh, you had the one fellow, I think, from Germany or something, who uh, who did the unmasking scene. Um, but yeah, I mean, this was really a great, great movie. The great Michael Myers, my favorite Michael Myers. And I think most people's favorite Michael Myers, and probably their favorite portrayal of him. This is before the supernatural stuff. This is before so many things that people consider Michael Myers to be. And I still think it's the best. Anyway, with that being said, folks, that is my list for the worst to best Michael Myers ranking or tier list or whatever you want to call this without doing the stupid red and green and yellow boxes on the side of the screen. I hate that. Why do people do that? Uh, just hold the book or the DVD up. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's harsh, but it's true. Anyway, uh, what do you guys think about the Halloween franchise? What do you think about the Michael Myers? What are your rankings on the worst to best Michael Myers performances of all time? Uh, I do want to throw in there, too. There was one other fellow I did not include in my list, and that was the original uh, throwback flashback stuff in Halloween Kills. There was a different actor playing that younger 23-year-old or whatever it was, Michael Myers, the one from the flashbacks of 1978 in that Halloween Kills movie. That guy was great, too. I didn't rank him in here, but he was fantastic. I think most of the focus should be on Halloween Kills with James Jude Courtney, but that flashback stuff, it's great. It's not James Jude Courtney, it's a younger guy, but that performance there, he's really good too. I just didn't include him in here. It doesn't really, uh, it doesn't really count to me because the movie's not about him. So, just wanted to throw that in there as a little asterisk. <laughs> so, what did you guys think about this Halloween ranking video. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Are you shocked by any of my picks? What did you think my best was going to be? I'd love to hear all that down below. What did you think my worst was going to be? I'm more interested in that because you guys could probably guess what the best was going to be. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. God bless you all and goodbye.